Welcome to a bumper news section. There have been some huge launches in the last week or so. The Nokia E7 is an N97 style hybrid with a huge 4 inch for a Nokia OLED screen with clear black display technology. Nokia's term for adding a polarizing layer under the glass to reduce reflections. Under the hood, it's much the same as the N8 with Symbian 3, plenty of custom graphics chips, including HDMI out. The camera is downgraded to an 8 megapixel EDOF, that's extended depth of field unit, but it still shoots 720p video. There's a big software bundle for enterprise email and office file editing plus social widget 16 gigabytes of mass memory and that decent keyboard downsides are a smallish 1200 milliamp hour non-replaceable battery and no micro sd slot watch for an e7 review as your christmas present the C7 can be thought of as the N8's cheaper but more stylish sister. The camera's 8 megapixels and EDOF again, and again can record HD 720p video. There's an improved 3.5 inch clear black display, AMOLED screen, again 8 gigabytes of internal memory, micro SD slot, and the other usual top end specs. The highlight is the price really, arriving at £340 or so on the high street, or free on £20 a month contracts. The C601, different from the C600, I reviewed in a phone show special last month, I'll refer to this naming convention later, uh, is a smaller, cheaper version of the C7 with a smaller 3.2 inch AMOLED capacitive touchscreen, yet again with the clear black display offering much improved outdoor visibility. Nokia are highlighting the social widgetized home screens common across all of Nokia's 2010 device launches. HTC, a day after Nokia's launches, then announced the Desire HD, a stunning 4.3-inch screen Android 2.2 smartphone made from a solid block of aluminium. There's a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor and the usual 8 megapixel camera, 720p video recording, plus Dolby Mobile and HSPA Plus data. Interestingly, it's also the first HTC device to feature the enhanced HTC Sense experience with HTCSense.com, essentially a remote backup, wipe and location service. The Desire Z or Desire Z if you're American may look familiar. It's the Euro version of the T-Mobile G2 featured in the last show with that Z-fold mechanism. Specs are the same 5 megapixel cam 720p video along with HSPA plus again and access to HTCSense.com. Returning to Nokia for a second there was also an intriguing new Series 40 feature phone launch, the Nokia C301 Touch and Type, fashioned in stainless steel with a 2.4 inch touchscreen display and a T9 keypad. The best of both worlds for the non-geeks out there? This is something I've wanted to do for a while, comparing flagships from the Android and Symbian worlds from the point of view of the things that I personally need my smartphone to do for me. I recognise your needs will be slightly different, but hopefully you'll still be interested in how each open mobile OS fares. I'm going to be using two top-end phones with similar form factors. The Samsung i 910 HD uh, being used to shoot this uh, phone show, still the biggest and most powerful Symbian power device a full year after launch, and the Motorola XT720, the most camera-centric of the uh, Android smartphones so far. I guess I could have borrowed a Galaxy S and pitched it head-to-head -head with the upcoming Nokia N8, but I doubt my usage would change much between the two pairs of devices. You still can't really beat the size of Google's databases, which is why finding stuff around me is usually best done in the free Google Maps. Whether it's finding a business or attraction, Google Maps is the app that has almost never let me down on any platform, really. The Android phone wins out here by a nose due to the slicker interface and the use of multi-touch. Zooming in and out on the Symbian version of Google Maps still requires prodding at zoom icons. But there's really not much in it. On both systems, you can just search by voice to find things even faster. Car repairs. And there we go, local car repairs. Uh, nine points to Android, uh, eight to Symbian. Yes, the single most asked question in our family. On the Samsung with Symbian, the local weather is a web bookmark away or an application icon away. There are plenty of weather apps. On some Nokia phones, you can even set a weather widget on the home screen. But the Android uh, home screen system is unsurpassed. And it's a doddle to have local weather here presented prominently on the central home screen for instant ready reference and one tap through to the full details. Um, there's a similar system for Symbian, a commercial app called SPB Mobile Shell. But you can't fault the Android phone's abilities here out of the box. Nine to Android, seven points to Symbian. Now, using most phones as a torch involves cranking up the screen brightness and holding in front of you in a vague glow that won't quite stop you walking into a ditch sort of way. But most modern phones mostly have nice bright LED flashes, so it makes sense to use them instead. They're far more usable. On the Symbian phones, there's an inexpensive phone torch utility. It's free for some devices, including this i 910 that I'm shooting on. Plus, some Nokia Symbian phones have a torch function built in and imprinted on the keyboard. 
Similar utilities exist for some, but not all Android phones, not helped by not all phones having an LED flash in the first place. The X-T720 here only has a Xenon flash for camera use, so it can't act as the torch at all. But I'll average the scores given out across the uh, all the Android phones I've tried. Nine points to Symbian, five for Android. Like many people today, especially those with kids or extended families, SMS messaging is a staple of communication, which means having to bang them out pretty quickly without bashing your head on the nearest wall in frustration. Both devices here are capacitive touchscreens and are the same size, 3.7 inches. But the, uh, the software keyboard on the XT720 wins despite a poorer layout because of the good text correction and word completion, enhanced by having the, uh, the voice recognition only a screen tap away. Again, if you're in a quiet enough environment though. Nine points to Android 7 to Symbian. Despite working from home, I do try and get out and about sometimes, especially with my family in tow. For example, visiting national trust sites across the UK, each of which is usually in the middle of nowhere. I've simply come to rely on having full voice navigation built into any smartphone that tries to be worthy enough for my pocket. Every recent Nokia smartphone has Ovi Maps built in, and a clever soul has even released the latest version of this for my <coughs> Samsung i910. Result, one happy bunny. Bobby Maps is simply stunningly good these days for both pedestrian and car navigation. Google build their own navigate function into Google Maps in most recent Android phones now, but the voice is very robotic and unfriendly. The root instruction is not as reliable as Nokia. It's not available worldwide and you can't preload maps before traveling. And so you're reliant on a data connection at all times. 10 points to Symbian here, seven to Android. Like most viewers, I take quite a lot of photos and videos with the phone that's with me. Now this, in theory, is where the X-T720 should shine, having the best camera in any Android smartphone. Uh, the Xenon Flash, even though it's weaker than in Nokia's old, old N82, does mean that evening party and disco shots come out perfectly and the 8 megapixel stills and good light are quite acceptable, if not up to the standard of Nokia's N86. Uh, the Android camera interface is quite slow and clunky though, Android 2.2 really can't come fast enough. In comparison, the IE910 takes slightly better stills and good light, but falls away fast once you get into the evening. In video mode, the IE910 takes the lead with the latest HX8 firmware offering full initial autofocus. Uh, averaged across all models, the Symbian powered devices do tend to have slightly better cameras. So despite these two contenders coming out fairly equal, I'm going to declare a winner. Eight to Symbian, seven to Android. Of course, having taken a load of photos and videos on a day out, the natural thing is to gather around the tea table and show them off. The standard image and video players on Symbian are fairly clunky and the Nokia written substitutes aren't much better. The IE910 even comes with a couple of extra image and video viewers, presumably working on the quantity, not quality principle. Uh, but the Android photo and video viewers coupled with the presence of graphics hardware on most phones makes for a simpler, smoother and generally happier experience. And yes, there's that uh, multi-touch again. Nine points to Android, seven to Symbian. Like many of you, I'm a bit of a Twitter addict these days. Hey, follow me, at Steve Litchfield. Uh, and there's no shortage of Twitter clients on any mobile platform. Gravity on the IC910 is a commercial app that's silky smooth and a literal pleasure to use on the large touchscreen. Also bringing in Facebook, Google Reader and Foursquare updates for those of you who are really keen, very impressive. My favorite on Android is this, Twidroid which doesn't do as much, but gets close to gravity for Twitter use at least. A shame that neither platform yet includes Twitter support in the OS, but actually built in, but apparently it's coming in each case. Eight points each, although gravity is all round superior, the sheer choice on Android is bewilderingly seductive. I live and die almost literally by my Gmail account. It's a pain to get to on Symbian, mind you. You'll have heard Tim rant about this on the phone show chat. You've either got to use an old Java client or make do with the mobile web, web interface or configure the built-in Symbian messaging app to work with IMAP 4 or use Nokia messaging or use the hooks to mail for exchange. Uh, it's just a complete mess. In contrast, as you might expect from Google, Android has superb integration with Gmail. All the main functions are there as fast, as simple as you like, right from moment one, 10 points to Android, a disappointing seven to Symbian. Listening to podcasts is a big pleasure for me, informing me as well as entertaining. Nokia has included a superb podcasting client on most of their Symbian phones over the last three years. Though curiously, Samsung's version of it here is buggy and horrible. I've been using Symbian Podcatcher, an open source app, but it's still in beta and I'm having to be rather patient with it. Uh, as with the Nokia app, podcasts are automatically gathered over my home Wi-Fi and that's always ready for listening. 
The Android market has a number of podcatching clients of which the usual recommendation is this, Google's Listen. But there's plenty of choice. I'm sure I could find a workable system from these two platforms, whichever phone you handed me, so eight points each. I'm not a huge gamer, but I do enjoy playing <laughs> casual games and odd moments queuing or waiting for the family to be ready. To be honest, neither the Android or Symbian platforms can match the quality and number of games that the iPhone ecosystem can boast. I still find a few favourites though. Here's uh, Caron 3D on Android and there's Micro Pool on Symbian. Okay, okay, they're, they're both pool games, but then that's just me. I, I could list the really decent games on each of these two platforms on the fingers of both hands, sadly, compared to the iPhone's hundreds. Uh, seven points to Android, six points to Symbian. We shouldn't forget that at heart these devices are phones and personal organisation devices. Being able to confidently pick up an incoming phone call, having up-to-date contacts and calendar information always to hand, these are just as important as the smartphone things mentioned so far. The Symbian-powered i910 handles calls brilliantly with its physical make-and-end call buttons, has great call logging and has a great set of speakers for hands-free calls. It syncs personal data well to desktop PIM apps, but getting online information syncing properly is a job for a real geek. In contrast, the Android-powered Motorola suffers from relying on touchscreen gestures and taps to handle calls, but it does have a good mono speaker here, unusually for an Android phone, and gains by having the superb Google contacts and calendar information, everything on the phone and in the cloud is always bang up to date. Impressive. Uh, so pros and cons for each. Um, seven points a pair. Looking at the points I've awarded for suitability to the things that I need to do with a smartphone, Motorola XT720 just wins with 87 points out of 110, with the Samsung i910 on 84. So is Android superior to Symbian in the smartphone world? Well, arguably. More telling us that neither of these phones would make my current top five, both having their own flaws. But I have tried to keep the points as generic to their platform as possible. And with the likes of the Symbian 3-powered Nokia N8 and E7 all coming along in the next few months, it's clear that such a small victory for Android could be overturned in a jiffy. Or widened, of course, with the HTC Desire HD and Motorola Milestone 2, both battling for Android. <laughs> Watch this space.